Hello, welcome to Free School Exam Preparation. Today we're going to talk about Cambridge IGCSE Computer Science 0478, and this is for the syllabus from 2023 to 2025. Today's unit is Unit 3.3 .3, Data Storage. So in this lecture, we'll talk about the difference between primary storage and secondary storage, and then we'll introduce virtual memory and also its advantages. And finally, we'll discuss about the pros and cons of using cloud storage. OK, so this is a high-level diagram of all the storages um, in the computer system. So cache allows the fastest access by the CPU. And the next level will be the primary storage. It can be either RAM or ROM. So CPU can also access primary storage directly, but the speed is not as fast as cache. And the next layer will be the secondary storage. So it can be either offline or can be at a remote location. So we call it cloud storage. So for the offline secondary storage, it can either be magnetic, solid state, or optical. OK, so let's take a look at this primary storage first. So as we just mentioned, CPU can directly access primary storage. So there are two types of primary storage. The first one is called RAM, the second one is called ROM. So let's take a look at ROM first. So ROM stands for read-only memory. So the data there is permanent. So that means you can't change the data which has been already written on ROM. So it's non-volatile. So that means if you turn off your computer, the information stored in ROM will not be lost. And it is used to store the bootstrap and the BIOS data. So for BIOS, it means the basic input and output system. So it can load the devices and also the operating system. And for RAM, it stands for random access memory. So why it's called random? This is because uh, the memory location accessed is independent from the history. So let me give you one example. So last time we talked about that um, the RAM is partitioned into many smaller cells or smaller parts. Right? And each location has an address. And for example, we just write something to this address. OK, so if we want to write another piece of information, so it can be any place in this RAM as long as it's available. It does, it's not necessary to be this one, this one, or the one adjacent to the previously written uh, location. So that's why it's called random. And RAM is temporary. So that means you can change the information um, in RAM. Um, and it's used to store the data, application, and the operating system that are currently being used by the CPU. So actually, last time we talked about how CPU can read from RAM and also can write data to RAM. Uh, another feature of RAM is it's volatile. So that means if you turn off your computer, the information stored in RAM will be lost. OK, so there are two types of RAM. So the first one is called dynamic. The second one is called static. So static um, allows faster access than dynamic because it uses flip-flops and doesn't need to be refreshed. So this one will be used for cache. And for the dynamic one, it is cheaper and also it has higher memory capacity. So it's used for the main memory. OK, so let's take a look at the secondary storage now. So the secondary storage can't be directly accessed by CPU. And it's also non-volatile like ROM. So you still have the data even after you turn off your computer. And then it's used to store the operating system, the complete system, and also the device drivers, and also the general files. So general files means the pictures, um, like the, the movies, the games, you know, all these things will be stored in secondary storage because you don't want them to be lost after you turn off the computer. OK, so there are three different types of secondary storage, magnetic, solid state, and optical. So for magnetic, uh, here is um, we, we have this hard disk drive, which is a magnetic um, technology. So the digital data is stored on this 
sur magnetic surface of platter. So this is a platter. And platter is divided into sectors. So this blue part is sector and also tracks. So this red track, we have many tracks here. And then we have some electromagnetic heads, which can move across, right? So for example, if you want to read some data which is located here, so the head will move across and then read the data here. And also the platters can spin. So this one involves lots of movements that will result in significant latency. So that means it takes time to read the information or write data to hard disk drive. Also, another disadvantage of HDD is sometimes it may become fragmented. So that means some data is stored here, some data is stored here, stored here, and then you delete this data, and you delete the data, you delete the data. So it turned out the data is scattering everywhere on the platter. So it takes very long time to locate the data and read the data or write the data. So in order to help solve this issue, we can use some defragmentation software. Okay, so the next one is solid state drive. So the working method of solid state drive is very different from hard disk drive. There is no moving part. So how, how solid state drive um, like works is out of the scope of this subject. However, I still want you to um, memorize that it involves the electron movements and these movements are controlled by this NAD or no chips. So where is data stored in solid state drive? So they are stored in those tiny transistors. And for each tiny transistor, uh, transistor it has a control gate and a floating gate. So the uh, floating gate uh, allows the electrons to flow because electron flow is negative. Right? And the control gate will create some positive charge to interrupt this negative flow. So that's how the um, solid state drive works. But as I just mentioned, uh, it's out of the scope, the details. So if you are interested, please search um, by yourself. It's, there are like plenty of resources available in the internet. So because solid state drive is, has no moving parts, it's not like the hard disk drive, the head needs to move and the platters need to sp uh, spin. So this one will be much faster the access will be much faster. And also because it doesn't need to move, so the power consumption will be lower. So it also is thinner and lighter. So for laptop, if, we, if it has solid state drive, it will be usually thinner. Okay, however, there is some problem because the SSD has a lifetime. So if you store some data there, after like 30 years or 40 years, the data might be lost. Okay, so the third uh, technology of second store, uh, st storage is optical. So CD, DVD, and Blu-rays, they all use this technology. So for all three, like CD, DVD, and Blu-ray, the data is stored in pits and lens. However, for CD and DVD, they use red laser to read and write. For Blu-ray disc, they use a blue laser to read and write on the disc. So um, the pits and lens in the Blu-ray discs are much smaller than them in the CD or DVD. So this Blu-ray disc usually has larger storage than DVD. And another benefit of Blu-ray disc is it is encrypted, so it can prevent the copyright um, piracy. And another benefit is the data transfer rate will be higher in Blu-ray disc. Okay, so here is just a short summary. So for the magnetic, we have the HDD and also removable HDD. And for the solid state, uh, we have the solid state drive, so it should be S, memory sticks and flash memories. And for optical, the CD, DVD and Blu-ray discs use this technology. Okay, so now let's take a look at virtual memory. So think about um, like a situation. For example, I have a very large program. So I have, this is RAM here. And this program has, let's say, six pages. So one page means one block of data that can be loaded into RAM or being loaded out from the RAM. So this is my um, program. Okay, so it has one, two, three, four, five, six, right? And the RAM um, has only, let's say, five locations. 
So first, this page one will be loaded into RAM, and then page two, and then page three, and then page four. And now, page five will be loaded. So five spaces here. So page six needs to be loaded, right? Otherwise, CPU can't execute the program because everything needs to go to the RAM and then from RAM to CPU. So this will result in a crash of the computer system because there's no place to go. So in order to solve this problem, so we have something called virtual memory um, like is used. So this is a secondary storage. Right? So we partition here as our virtual memory. Okay, so in this situation, let's say, so for example, pro, um, like page one, two, three, four, five has been loaded, right? So the page six needs to be loaded to RAM in order to be executed. So then RAM here will have one page which is not being used at this moment. Let's say page three will not be used. So page three will be loaded out into this virtual memory. So three will be here. So once three goes to here, so the RAM has one empty space. So page six can go to this place, right? And then CPU will execute this page six. And once the execution is done, there is another empty space. So page three can be swapped back into this space. So virtual memory helps solve the issue that when the RAM size is smaller than the program size. So the pages can be temporarily swapped out from the RAM into the virtual memory, and the new pages can be loaded into RAM. So once those pages have been executed, so this uh, swapped out program can be swapped back to RAM um, if it's necessary. If not, they will just stay there. Okay, so uh, for the virtual memory, there might be another issue. It's called thrashing. So what does thrashing mean? Thrashing means like the time will be used to keep swapping things in, swapping things out. So this shows that the CPU is not executing the program. It's rather used to swap things, right? So this will cause uh, like downgrade in performance of the computer. So in order to solve this issue, usually we need to have this uh, virtual memory at um, like a reasonable large size. And also the program can't exceed the RAM size for too much. Okay. So the benefits of the virtual memory is it can save money, right? Why save money? Because you don't need to buy a large RAM if you don't execute large program very often. Let's say if I want to um, run a very large program, let's say once per month, there is no point for me to have a very large RAM to match this. I can, if I want to run this large program, I can use this virtual memory to temporarily do the swapping in and swapping out thing. Okay, so now let's take a look at cloud storage. So what does cloud storage mean? So that means your data is not stored at your local place, but rather at a remote location. And usually the cloud storage service is provided by some third party, let's say Google and also Amazon, and they provide cloud storage service. So the benefits of the cloud storage service is you are able to access your data at any time and by using any device and also any place in the world as long as you have internet available. So think about, um, for example, if you are traveling, you don't want to bring your uh, like a removable hard disk drive or you don't want to bring your computer, you still can use your mobile phone to download the data or access the data stored at the cloud storage. Um, another benefit is it allows the data redundancy. So that means, for example, if you have a copy of data stored at your local com uh, at your computer or at a like drive, and for somehow this computer is broken or the drive is broken, so you don't want to lose the data. So you can save another copy as a cloud storage as a backup. So this is called data redundancy because the same data is being saved twice or more times. 
and cloud storage can also provide large capacities. So if you look at this picture here, um, I think that's um, um, like a Google Cloud platform, uh, like servers. So because they have many, many servers and in many locations in the world. So if you just um, like pay and you can obtain unlimited storage space. Okay, so the disadvantages of the store, uh, cloud storage is of course the cost. So you have to pay in order to have your data stored there. And also you need to upload your data and download your data if necessary. So that means you have to pay to the internet service provider for the internet service. And another disadvantage is think about if you are going to a remote place and there's no internet access. So you, there's no way you can access your data. And finally is security issue. Um, actually in the past years, we have seen some news like the, um, the information stored in the cloud storage has been stolen. But how, uh, nowadays they're trying to upgrade the security of the storage. So I'm trying to make it less sus um, like prone to the attack. Okay, so that's everything for today's lecture. We hope you have enjoyed it and wish you good luck with your exam. If you are interested, please subscribe to our channel, Free School Exam Preparation. Thank you.